welcome I'm Monica Rea and today I'm going to show you how I made this bodycon type dress for spring it's got some side rouging so it has some draping going on in the front and the back and to, in order to create the keyhole neckline I made a separate shrug which is what this is that way it makes it a little more versatile I can obviously wear the shrug with something else or I can wear the dress by itself and of course it looks super cute together so let me show you how you can make yours Oh yeah, so a quick side note, when I went to go film this at the park, it was absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to share some of that footage here with you guys. Um, so you're going to see like some random flowers, maybe a squirrel or two, a bird, Spanish moss. Uh, yeah, it's spring, so I got excited. So yeah, um, let's get started making the dress. <laughs> To make the actual sweater dress, I'm going to use an old tank dress as a pattern. It's a simple two-piece dress. So I separated the side seams. You don't have to do this, but I no longer want it as a dress. It's probably going to be used to make more dresses until it gets turned into something else. The fabric I'm using is a compression tricot. It's super, super stretchy, which is where the bodycon part comes in. I've not ever worked with compression tricot before and couldn't really find much online about working with it. So this is a complete experiment. Anyway, this old dress came down to my ankles. So I'm shortening that to about uh, my mid calf. The sweater knit that I'm using is going to drape a bit below that. So I'm cutting out the front and back pieces of the tricot. And here's the sweater fabric. I went ahead and cut out the front and back as well. The only difference was that I doubled the length of the dress in the sweater knit. So I'm putting the front pieces right sides together and then sew the neckline. And side note, when you are sewing with knit fabrics, it would be very helpful if you use a jersey needle. The reason being is because the way knitted fabrics are made, it's with a series of loops. So that's what gives it its stretch. And with a jersey needle, the tip is slightly rounded, so it will pierce the gaps in between the fibers instead of puncturing through it and damaging the loops. Okay. So I'm going to be sewing around the neckline and um, just a side note, I will be using a stretch stitch for the entire project with the exception of the gathering stitches later on. Alright, so now I'm going to top stitch the front neckline so it lays nice and flat. You can see here, that's the first seam, then you just flip it over and it should look like this. So now I'm going to start on the gathering. Ideally, I was aiming for the gathers to start just above the waist. Essentially, what I'm going to do is gather the sweater layer until it matches the length of the tricot layer. And then I'm going to stop about 5 eighths of an inch from the edge. Then sew those two sides together. Here, I'm just trying to get the gathers as even as possible and then do the same on the other sides. And now that they seem well placed, I'm just going to pin it before we head over to the serger. I continue to sew all the way up the side. So here's what it looks like so far with the front gathered and sewn. And now we're going to do the same for the back. Why I chose to do the rouging like this instead of other ways like using the cord, uh, like making channels and threading a cord through, is because I didn't want the strings for this dress. Alright, here's the first neckline seam that we're going to flip over and top stitch. On to the gathers. After getting them evenly placed, I'm going to go search them together. So we're going to move on to the armholes. I'm just doing a narrow hem on each side. Then just pin in place. Okay. 
I chose to hand sew these using a whip stitch. Now we can attach the front to the back. To start, I'm going to sew the shoulder seams together, then the side seams. I'm going to go ahead and pin all of them before going to the sewing machine, just to make it go a bit faster. And of course, I'm using a stretch stitch on these seams. While sewing the sides, you'll want to make sure the outer fabric or the sweater layer is not bunching up in any other way outside of the intentional gathers. So now onto the shrug. So here is the sleeve, sleeve cuff, the front, back, and the neckband. I used pattern M8348 in view A. I did shorten the length of the front a bit, um, more so in the center front area, in order to create that keyhole neckline look. To start, we're going to sew the shoulder seam together. I'm just going to pin them in place. OMG, if I forget to bring this thing to the sewing machine one more time. <laughs> Next is attaching the neckband. So first you'll want to do a stay stitch around the neckline. This will make the seam overall more sturdy and secure, which is something that you would want since this seam will be stretched with normal wear. To make the neckband, you're just going to fold it in half with the shorter sides together and sew. Now you just press the seams open then fold it in half, wrong sides together with the raw edges lined up, like so. Then just pin it so things are neater and the edges stay lined up. Now pin the neckband to the neckline. You could base the neckband first if you wanted. Just make sure to leave a little extra thread because you'll have to stretch the neckband to fit. Now that the neckband is attached, I'm going to top stitch the seam allowance down. I like the way it looks and it's a bit more comfortable in my opinion. I also top stitched the shoulders as well. I just went top stitching crazy on this shrug. <laughs> Okay, so next is to attach the sleeves. Per the instructions, we're going to take the top of the sleeve and pin it along the sides of the front and back bodice, if you will. So pin in place, and let's slide over to the serger. Oh yeah, so I forgot to mention, I do have a micromanager. He's always so close to my workspace, it's like he's watching every stitch. Meet Figaro. That's my baby though. All right, so I went ahead and connected the sleeves and stopped at the large dot that's referenced in the instructions. For me personally, I sewed like an inch and a half to two inches past that dot because it wasn't laying flat on my back, which I'll show you here what it kind of looks like. So you may need to make that adjustment as well. Now on to the sleeve cuffs. We're almost done. You pretty much construct these in the same way as the neckband. However, I think it would be a bit cuter if the sleeve was gathered a little before being attached to the cuff. First, you sew the long side, press the seams open, then flip it up so all the raw edges are lined up, pin it, and then attach. And of course, top stitch, you know, complete the look. Lastly, it's time to hem it up. I did a narrow hem very similar to the armholes on the dress, and ta-da! Now roll that beautiful spring footage. <laughs> It's super comfy and I love it. 
The next time I make a bodycon dress, I'd like to use a zipper closure. That way I can make the compression tricot layer tighter and maybe play around with body sculpting a bit. But yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. If you're looking for some other ideas for sewing projects, you can check out some of these dresses here.